All right, everyone, it's 9.30 Monday morning, April the 9th. We'll bring this regular session of Somerville County Commissioner's Court to order. Uh, will everybody please join us in pledges? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Larry, would you lead us in the prayer? Father in heaven, thank you for this day you give us. Father, we pray that you'll give us wisdom on this court to make the right decisions, that we'll listen to your guidance. And may your will be done, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, item number three, approved minutes of previous commissioner's court. I'm showing two previous courts in March, March the 12th and March the 28th. I'd like a motion that we approve those minutes. I have a motion by John. Second. I have a second by Kenneth. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor of said motion. That's five, four, zero against. Item number four is presentation to the court by Ed Hornick. Mr. Hornick, if you would, would you please come up here to this microphone? And would you, uh, I meant to check see if that red light was turned on. Thank you, Brian. Are you going to beep that or whatever when I've got 30 seconds you left? Bet. I will let you know. And I had to, I've talked to your wife and you and told both of you, hey, Susie. You know, you have three minutes to talk. Or we won't be able to discuss it and take action on things like that, but you have full time to make your presentation. Yeah, uh, we don't discuss it. It's not an open discussion after I get through. Right. No, sir. Okay. And uh, go ahead, Mr. Hornick. What uh, we want to talk about this morning, I've just got some topics here. It's unsafe traffic on County Road 304. Those of you that lived here a lot of years knows that that used to be called Long, uh, Long Valley. It's about two and a half miles long, that road uh, 304, coming off of Farm Market Road 200, and it goes down into a dead-end valley. So any truck that goes down there has to come out. You double the number of trips every time somebody goes down there. But uh, they're driving at an unsafe speed. Disregarding the traffic of local people all together, taking their half out the middle. Now, we talked about the possibility of speed bumps. Well, I talked to an ex county uh, attorney, and he told me that speed bumps were illegal, said they were considered, uh, I forgot the word, but anyway, it's, it's something that would, meant danger. But it would only mean danger to those that's driving too fast over the speed bumps. If it says 10 miles an hour, then it's not going to be any danger. What their argument was is going to tear up the trucks. And this is a kind of a priority issue here. Which is more important, them have a torn up truck or somebody making funeral arrangements for one of their family members. It's a lot more trucks going up and down that road than they originally had said. They said 80 a day. Um, my wife was there at the gate the other day and was timing them, and they were running from anywhere from three to five a minute for long periods of time. She talked to uh, Representative Sheffield, and he sent out one of his men, Gary Kafer. I think some of you know him. And he told us on the front porch of our house, there's about a dozen people there. He said when my wife Darla told him about three to five a minute that he thought she was uh, embellishing this a little bit. But he says if anything, she was saying too low of a figure because this morning as we came out, we followed about six out. One of them was a local truck, I guess it pays taxes. I don't know if any other does. But he was running 45 miles an hour on the 35-mile zone. We met several other trucks, both of them showing that the road is too narrow. It's 18 foot to 21 foot, and minimum should be 20 foot. And it's that that's kind of crowded even for small vehicles. But you take two trucks, both of them have at least one set of 
duels off on the side, chewing up the asphalt and breaking it up. And uh, after we got past there, then he took his straight out of the middle. A differential of his truck was right straight over that yellow mark. And by the way, I want to thank the thank y'all for getting those yellow marks in there and that brush you cut just to the right as we come out of our drive because that's a very dangerous place. Uh, most of you know we sell pro- produce out of our carport in the summertime, and a lot of the people are older people. And when they come up there and you've got to crane your neck, try to see what's coming. Because those people, they do not care. I know that it can get to be an emotional thing, but they do not care. You've got 30 seconds. You asked me to tell you. Okay. Uh, considering an alternate route, they do damage. and uh, But the priorities are dollars versus human sign lives. This is a no-brainer. It's loads of sand. How many loads of sand would it take to pay for a human life? Thank you, Mr. Horner. All right, item number five. Discuss, take action on Somerville County investment policy. I believe that was from you, Susie. Yes, there's no changes on that. I just have to bring it before y'all every year for a review. Do you have any questions for Susie? Any comments for Susie? Susie, are you recommending a, a, a variety of investment options here or, or changes to the existing investment program? Um. Well, I'm happy right now if y'all are happy without making any changes. It says in our investment policy that we can. So uh, if anybody wants to visit about that, I'd be more than happy to entertain it. You uh, come, came to my office one day about a month ago or something said there was someone that's... Text pool. Um, text pool has two different pools, uh, the regular one and then the prime one. <clears throat> and the prime deals with commercial paper and they pay a little bit extra, uh, a little bit higher interest. Um, Is there more risk associated with that? There's, There hasn't been a loss with text pool. Uh, so, uh, you know, we, we visited about it and I told her that to maybe you know, let's explore that a little bit, maybe use it on some of the funds that we don't need, uh, you know, real liquid access to. Uh, maybe put that golf course reserve fund into that higher interest rate one, see, see how it operates for a few months before we just go lock, stock, and barrel into it. Higher is a relative term, is it not? I mean, it's not a magnitude of uh, logarithmic proportions is it as as the when you talk about risk no i'm talking about percent uh, return. return well it's it's a better it's a it is a better rate to be sure in the in the prime account right i understand but it how much difference between the two well, about another i thought it was like almost like a half percent oh okay that's uh, my point what i looked at Yes, sir, and all those balances. I mean, and if you looked at the financial statements, you know, we're doing quite well in our interest income now. I yeah. mean, we're, yeah. we've uh, really done quite well. The Federal Reserve has helped us out in that regard as well. Okay. 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 Any further discussion? What, what drives our investment policy right now with our investment officer is liquidity. Liquidity takes precedent because of you know, our, our particular operations. So. Yeah. so is the question before us if we want to stay like we are and make changes? It's just a requirement that, that uh, we have that the investment policy must be presented to the court on at least an annual basis just so that you're aware of it. There's no changes being So no action required. Just just that we presented it okay. and it's in the minutes that it was presented to you. Okay. Everybody good at investment policy? Uh-huh. No way.
what action will be taken? Okay. Item number six, discuss take action on contract between Somerville County and Motivation Education and Training. I believe that's you, Paula. I was approached a while back uh, from a representative of the program, and they wanted to know if we would be willing to be a host agency for the program. It's directed at 55 and older income-eligible um, participants in Somerville County. It's, it's over a lot of counties, but ours would come, should we choose to do this, they would come from Somerville County only. We... Um, we would be required to, any department that would be interested would be required to fill out a job description of what they would have them doing. The uh, participants would look over the job descriptions, and if they were interested, they would send that person to the department head for an interview, just like you would anyone that you were given a job to. And should they choose to use them, the program pays the participant $7.25 an hour. We can use them up to 20 hours a week. And should we at any time choose not to use them anymore, we just call the, the pr uh, program and they let them know that they won't come back. You know, we don't want them back anymore. I've talked to uh, the city of Reno in the city of Gainesville that's currently using that program. They like it. They say it does a world of good. And um, the goals of the program are for the participants to be engaged, to learn new skills, and hopefully to take those skills and get a job somewhere else, or that we, when we have an opening, we would possibly hire them. So... They provide the workers' compensation, but should we choose to do this, I would like to also require a urine screen and, of course, do a background check on them. And all, I'm sorry. Go ahead. And all we do is for actually take care of the whoever the department heads or elected officials they work for. They just take care of the time. Yes. To this organization. Yeah. Sorry about that. They they require that one person be uh, trained for supervising the program, and then uh, each department head would have to turn in timesheets. And I volunteered to do that. I think it's like a an hour or two training. Have you talked to some department heads? Yes, there are several that are interested. <clears throat> now, this program, just to be clear, it's not to replace a position that we have budgeted. It's more supplemental. And there's no cost to the county except for just whatever we take to do the timesheets. Correct. Okay. So could I use somebody like that for in my office and the county pay part of their wage and that pay part of their wage? I think as long as it doesn't make them income ineligible, they have to be income eligible to participate. So the additional wages might cause a problem. What but, does that mean? You know, I'm sorry, what? What does that mean? What does what mean? What you just said. The income, right. the income eligible, yeah. there's a criteria for someone to be a participant in this program, an what income requirement. I don't know what the dollar amount is, but we could explore it. <clears throat> well, if the department heads are interested, I don't see anything wrong with it. Any questions on this end? Well, do we have a, a motion? I'm a motion. I have a motion by Larry to enter into an agreement with this host agency as us being the host. Yes. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Don. Do I have any further questions or discussion, comments? Thank you. All in favor of said motion. That's five, four, zero against. Thank you, Paula. Item number seven, discuss take action on new fees for brush and wood transfer station. Correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the rates that we discussed last time stayed the same. We added a word 
all commercial and out of county. Is that correct? That's correct. So, Somerville County residents will be $10 minimum up 650 pounds, prorated above that at $30 a ton. All commercial and out of county will be $20 minimum up to 800 pounds, prorated at $50 per ton above 800 pounds. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Do I have a motion to move forward with this? Yes. I have a motion by Larry. Do you have a second? Do the new rates for brush and wood at the landfill transfer station. I have a second by Don. Any further questions or discussion? I'd just like for the record we ought to give an explanation of why this is necessary. Okay. Would you like me to do that? Yes, I would. The tub grinder, and you all jump in here and clarify anything that I miss. Brian, Susie, the tub grinder requires personnel to run the tub grinder. The tub grinder is a high-maintenance piece of equipment. It's about 20 years old. By the time you insure it, maintain it, and put people on it to run it, it will run us anywhere from $75,000 to $100,000. We have $58,000 set aside each year to go into that particular item to take care of that. But it's an item that if we're going to continue to offer to the county, then we need to somehow supplement our expenses. Also, we are seeing an influx or an increase in commercial people bringing, charging individuals or companies a fee for tree and brush removal from their property. So they're being compensated to do this. They're taking it to our landfill where there is no charge, and we are becoming the owners of that and having to grind it up and dispose of it. And that's not right. We should not be compensating commercial endeavors to grind their stuff up. On an average, you run about 152,000 to 155,000 tons per month. When tractor supply was being involved, we ran over 300,000. So there is a possible negative to this. I think I brought it up to maybe Mark. It might cause more trash to be not taken care of. It's brush and brush and wood only. It's brush and wood, not trash. Well, you can use the phrase however you want. Well, that's what it is. Probably more fires may get local homes. I'm sure it will cause more fires, yes. Right. All right. I have a motion by Larry and I have a second by Don. Do we have any further questions or discussion? All in favor of said motion. It's by four, zero against. I'll get this out to sign 67 so we can get it printed up. And it's just effective upon when the sign is put up? Mike said after we got the signs put up two weeks, he thought it would be a good time. First, we'll have to have signs. Right. So who's going to take care of that? I'll take care of the sign end of it because I've already contacted them. I said if I just email them this proof when we're done, if we decide to move forward, then they'll have it done. May 1st is probably a good time to implement because the time I get to sign 67, then we get it back and they want two weeks to implement it. May 1st. May 1st. You're going to put a sign both places up on the top end? Yes. And the signs were four by four to go up by the highway, $90, and a two by two to go down by the scales, $30. Thank you. All right. Item number eight, discuss, take action on going out for RFPs for IT services. Our current situation will expire the 1st of June. So Brian and I have met with the school. We've met with Doug. We've met with many different individuals. 
If we go out and advertise for these today, they would be back on, is it May the 14th? Is that correct? Yes, sir. We would receive them back on May 14th. We'd review them. If people are here to make presentations that day in the executive session, we will do that. If not, we will schedule presentations later that month. So if we so desire, then we can move forward and award a contract before June the 1st. I make a motion that uh, request RFPs for IT services. I have a motion by John. Second. I have a second by Kenneth. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor said motion. That's five four zero against. Uh, item number nine, discuss take action on purchase of real estate. Would you like to make that presentation? Would you like me to make that presentation? We sit down with uh, Kevin. Taylor, to discuss the lot next door to be used for a parking lot. Uh, here again, jump in here and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, we went over everything with him. If the court were to prove it, that we put $10,000 in earnest money. We would not do the rest of the funding till after October 1st to move it into the next budget season. We'd have a closed date of on or before October 31st so we could get into our next budget season. Uh, he would pay for the survey. We'd pay for the customary title policy and part, I guess, all of the, all the closing uh, yes, all of the closing the associated the beside the survey. So it would be $100,000 total plus closing the county liability. Right now it would be $10,000 uh, deposited into earnest fund. And it's a non-refundable earnest money to get into hold. <coughs> and upon execution of the contract, the county will assume all responsibilities and maintenance on the lot, mowing and keeping it. Liability. Right, and picking up trash and those type of things. Do we have any further discussion, comments, questions? As, well? as we've as we've discussed, I, I think this is just a very um, good good direction for the future. Uh, and that the, the county will, and the taxpayers ultimately will receive dividends based upon this opportunity right now. Even if it's not developed immediately in the future. I'll make, I'll make the motion. I have a motion by Larry. Second. I have a second by John. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor said motion. It's 5 4, 0 against. Item number 10 discuss take action on declaring bunker gear surplus. Mark or Brian or whoever is going to discuss this. Mark. Fire department has approximately 11 sets of turnout gear, which is what we wear when we go into a fire that is past its shelf life of 10 years. It's no longer compliant for us to use. However, small volunteer fire departments that don't have the budgets that we have can benefit from this bunker gear. Uh, this department has a history of taking care of some of the smaller departments around us that come to help us. Walnut Springs has indicated that they could desperately use this bunker gear. I would like to see the court declare it surplus and allow us to donate it to Walnut Springs Volunteer Fire Department. I make a motion that we declare bunker gear surplus and approve the donation to Walnut Springs Volunteer Fire Department. I have a motion by John. Second. I have a second by Kenneth. Any further questions or discussion? Is there any associated liability? They understand that the shelf life has expired on this equipment? Yes, sir. Okay. They assume that responsibility? Yes, sir. Okay. Any further questions? All in favor said motion. It's 5 4, 0 against. Item number 11 accept donation to the sheriff's office. Yes, sir. The uh, sheriff's office has received an anonymous uh, donation uh, of two thousand one hundred and eighty dollars and fifty-two cents to be designated for uh, equipment purchases that uh, the sheriff's office needing. But uh, uh, statute requires that any donations to the county be uh, approved by the court. Any questions? I make a motion that we accept the donation of. $2,182.52? $2,180. 80 and 52 cents. 52 cents. Okay. Yes, sir. I stand corrected. Uh, and to be designated for equipment purchase. And designated for equipment purchase. I have a motion by John. Second. I have a second by Don. 
Any further questions or discussion? All in favor said motion. It's five, four, zero against. Item number 12, discuss take action on approving the lease for additional parking space for the Expo Center. I believe Brian and Andy have been over this. I've got the copies here. Bear with me. Was it $1 for 18 months? Help me out. That's fine. Yes, sir. I didn't know. I thought I saw that in here, but I didn't find it this morning. I think it's a dollar annually, so it comes out to a dollar fifty. Dollar fifty for eighteen months. Yes, uh, <laughs> basically, this is to relieve of the realty capital holdings. Brian being manager of that of all our building in case a horse, a trailer, a car, a person, anybody gets injured on that property. Correct. And that gives us the right to park vehicles, trailers, whatever. That are utilizing Expo. Yes, sir. Okay. And we continue to mow it, maintain it like we have for many, many years. And I have the conflict interest questionnaire here, along with if y'all so desire, we'll file with the two contracts. Yeah, you must copy all the conflict of interest. All right, cool. So, do I have a motion? I make a motion that um, we approve the. Um, Lease agreement with uh, Realty uh, Capital Holdings for the use of the uh, acreage adjoining the expo. I have a motion by John. Second. A second by Kenneth. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor said motion. It's by four, zero against. I'll lay these right here, Brian. We both can sign them up. Take care of all right, item number 13, discuss, take action on approval of the 570 expenditure for a jail walkthrough system at the Sheriff's Department. Wayne, did you want to present that? I think the money's already been allocated in the budget for that. Yes, sir. Uh, we're just uh, requesting to move forward with the purchase. This was something that was recognized by jail standards that we needed because we're currently just using a piece of paper and the jailers walk through and they write a time on there. And it's not an exact time. Um, whenever you walk through, and we're supposed to do walkthroughs every 30 minutes, and you have the exact 30 minute time, it looks bad to jail standards. They've uh, said that it would be best if we had a system like what we're looking at putting into our jail that actually works with the key cards that we have, and it tags who was there and exactly what time they were there and it's going to be placed at every station that they have to check in their jail walkthrough. Any questions? Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, 570 expenditure for the jail walkthrough system. I have a motion by John. Second. Second by Larry. Any further questions or discussion? All in, I'm sorry. How much is it? Uh, the amount is twelve thousand for the five seventy. We'd already approved the five seventy line yes. item budget item. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Specifically it's already been budget. approved in the budget. So I have a motion by John, second by Larry. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor said motion. It's five four zero again. Thank you. Thank you, Dwayne. Item fourteen. Award bids for janitorial and paper products. As you can see by the handout in your packet, there's 187 items. Um, if the court would uh, like me to, I'd be happy to read all 187. Or Please not. Suffice it to, uh, uh, with the approval of the county attorney, to uh, award the bids as presented on the on the bid award sheet. For a little bit. For the little bit. I'll take option number two. You see the you see the the bidders at the top, and each one has different items. So uh, the four the four awards will go to Mayfield, Empire, Baxter, and Mesa Tech. I'll make a motion that we approve. I accept the low bid on this merchandise. 
I have a motion by John. Second. I have a second by Larry. Any further questions or discussion for Brian? All in favor said motion. It's five four, zero against. Item number 15, approved of the transfers. Back to you, Brian. I sent those to you in your email. Uh, as I said in the email, none of, these are all interdepartmental transfers. None are coming from contingency. They're just moving uh, line items between their bud- uh, within their own departments, within their budgets. So. I know this wasn't in transfers, but it's in the bills and the uh, payables. Remind me what St. Mary's Place is about. Help me. Uh, that's for Pingo. Oh, that's that's, I'm sorry. Yes, that's a survey. Expense. That's a cool. survey that we had to pay for on Rapino's donation. Because I saw it come out of my engineering services and I was wondering yes, what sir. I was doing. Okay, that, that's deal. the cost for the free. What we had to do. Yeah, amen. <laughs> there, yeah. The one, free donation. One of the costs. We still got our surveyor redoing our side of that. Okay. So there's going to be some more costs. And I apologize, interrupting. Okay. I felt like that line item in your department was the. It already had engineering and Thanks surveys. That, yeah. So. Uh, That's good. St. Mary's is what threw me. <laughs> so, do I have a motion for the approved budget transfer? So moved. I have a motion by John. Second. I have a second by Kenneth. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor said motion. That's 5 4, 0 against. Item number 16, approve remainder of county bills. That was sent to you in two separate emails. Uh, the grand total is $670,553.84. Uh, some unusual or I guess rather uh, what I call non-recurring. Um, we do have in there the $10,000 payment uh, for the earnest money that was just previously uh, awarded. We're also purchasing and paying for a couple of large pieces of equipment, the, the uh, road uh, asphalt, asphalt truck, truck uh, and, and tank came in. I was blown away by the tank invoice, and then lo and behold, here came the truck invoice. Um, plus, we also bought a tractor for the golf course, and that is in this as well. So, uh, yes, sir. On page 7 and on page 10, Romco Equipment Company, asphalt truck, tank. $109,998. Yes, sir. Okay. On page 7, Houston Freightliner. For the truck. For the tank. Two different sale. invoices. The tank was Did it did not come as a unit? No, no. <laughs> You bought the truck, and then they put the unit on top of it. Okay. That's what I was saying. I got the invoice for the tank, and I was catching oh, my breath. That me. I, I got I, the invoice I, for the truck. Hopefully, I won't get an invoice for the tires next. Uh, <laughs> uh, that would be the key. What, what was our total approved? It was 190000 Okay, okay, yeah, okay, yes, okay, okay. I got you. Uh, another question I have is on indigent uh, legal. Do we keep a year-to-date running on? Yes, we do. Absolutely. Month to month. And we also do an annual report to the state. Yeah. Of course, the state, the state only wants criminal. Uh, they don't care about CPS cases, unfortunately, which is where we spend more of our money, actually. Uh, In district court, uh, CPS cases, Andy, correct me if I'm wrong, the children, the parents, the grandparents, and I believe anybody out gets a lawyer appointed to them, if need be. The children always have, have items appointed to represent them, and sometimes... Oftentimes, the parents. At our cost. At our yeah. cost. The average is probably, what, three attorneys per CPS case? Yes. And this is a, a mandate from the state of Texas, right? Yes, yes it Ref- is. And we refer to this as an unfunded mandate, correctly? Yes, it is. Up to roughly $60,000 this year. Yes, okay. And then the credit, <clears throat> the indigent defense credit that we get, like I said, only applies to criminal cases, um, and even then, it's seven percent. Yes, seven to eight percent. Exactly. Hardly anything. Yes. And we have no control over these costs. These are 
I guess I, w- I, would, I would venture to say negotiated, but that gives it too much credibility that the attorney submits it to the district judge and the district judge signs it with a court order to pay. And people wonder why our taxes go up. <coughs> Senator Bird will be a good one to talk to about that. Yeah. That's all. Yes, sir. Good question, though. Real good question. I make a motion to pay our bills. I have a motion by Kenneth to pay our bills. You have a second. I have a second by Donna. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor said motion. Five, four, zero against. Item number 17, approved county treasurer's report. We all saw that this morning. Yeah. How much motion? I have a motion by Larry, is that correct? Second yeah. by John. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor of said motion. Five, four, zero against. Item number 18, approve, receive monthly report, reports from county departments. I'll make a motion. I have a motion by Larry. Thank you. I have a second by Kenneth. Any further questions or discussions? All in favor said motion. It's five, four, zero against. Now at this time, which is 10.07 a.m., we'll retire into executive session. Jeff, let us know as soon as you hear something. Yeah, <laughs> Brian, you need this. I don't know that we need these copies All on right. the file. We'll reconvene back in open session at 1029 on April the 9th, Commissioner's Court. There's no action to be taken on executive session at this time. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion we adjourn this meeting. I have a motion by Kenneth. You have a second. Second by Don. All in favor? That's by far. Zero against. Thank you, Mr. Lucas. No, thank you. Y'all can keep it or turn it back in whichever you want. You, it's been filed for record. Get your exercise. Yeah.